What's up you guys? Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. Today we're gonna run through a fairly basic fade with a hard part. A question that I get asked a lot on this channel, where and how do you decide to put in the hard part? The answer to this question is a little more complicated than you might think because there's just too many variables. Every client's different. They come in with different growth patterns, different textures, different density. And the best thing that you could do is actually comb their hair, find the most natural fall of the part, and then do your best to put it in a good spot. The other side of the coin is kind of trial and error. If you try to force that part into an area where it doesn't belong, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to style it. If we do this on the natural part, it's gonna be the easiest for you to style it. If you want me to do it somewhere else, of course I will, but be prepared for some styling problems down the road. So with that being said, let's just get into the cut. Okay, so this is my girl here. I absolutely love her hair. I love working with this hair and I definitely would love to throw some designs and stuff like that in it, but check out how I'm gonna take her. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the process. This is actually something you can get done really fast if you use a nice efficient method. So one of my favorite things to start this haircut out with is if I don't have to pre-cut it, I'm actually gonna jump into a 5-0. So we'll take the 5-0, we'll knock her down and we're gonna get this done quickly. Now this is part of the phase one process in my fading system. Now if you guys are not familiar with the fading system, you need to check me out on the lives where we're gonna go really in depth on this, but I'm just trying to departmentalize the learning. So I need to get some of the easy stuff done fast, and one of the easiest things to do is to debulk and just get rid of this hair. So we have a 5-0, that's gonna leave the hair at 0.17 of a millimeter, and if you don't have a 5-0, you can use your trimmer, which is gonna take you forever and destroy your trimmer. But if you don't mind, you can use your trimmer and it will work the same. Afterwards, we're gonna come up underneath with the electric shaver. Now, before I do the electric shaver process, I like to kind of go clean it up a little bit with the trimmers and some of those hard to reach areas. But for the most part, as long as everything is done, we can move on. Now, I'm a really thorough kind of barber. I like to make sure that all my steps are done and that I'm not rushing ahead. Now, we're gonna use the electric shaver. I have a video about electric shaver specifically, and you guys can feel free to check this out if you feel like you're struggling in this step. But the Braun Series 9 is not only the smoothest, the fastest, and my personal favorite. And once I get kind of close to that line, I begin reducing tension and flicking away. Now, coming from 0.17 of a millimeter to skin, it's actually a pretty small jump, so it's actually not a difficult step. But please, take your time in this step and do not move forward into the fade until you feel like you've got this 100% on lock. Now, we're gonna go into the top. I'm actually gonna work this from the top down, sort of, you'll see but I'm gonna take the one and one half detachable because it's the fastest way to get this bulk done. So we are technically still operating in phase one. Phase one is just the de debulking, uh, removing hair, and we're not actually technically getting into the blend. Now, in, in phase two, we would, we would be using clipper over comb or something like that, or shear over comb, but in this case, obviously we're not gonna be touching the top, we're just gonna be going straight into the, the blend. So once I've removed all this hair, I wanna make sure that I've cut it down really good. I wanna make sure that I got all of it cut so that I don't have to go back to this step. And then, and only then, we'll actually begin our follow-up steps. There will be times where you actually have to hold the clipper upside down, cut across the grain, cut down. It, 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 in the colic, in the colic in the back, the hair is going to go in a bunch of different directions. So you need to do your best to try to come against the grain. Going against the grain is actually going to be the best way to eliminate that hair and get it down to that one and one half length. Once I got the hair knocked down to the good length, the 1.5, I'm actually going to put in my hard part now. I'm going to do this with my gold FX because actually my gammas were broken at this time and I was waiting for a replacement blade. But the gold FX is a great trimmer as well. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap that line in. I like to put it in kind of thin and make sure that you get both sides. So then I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to get the bottom side of the line. So essentially there's like two sides to the line. And if you put it in kind of thin, you leave yourself room to sort of make it a little bit wider uh, to make it the way that you want it. And you can also make it a little wider with your electric shaver. So let's get into the half attack. I got my half guard and I'm putting in my first guideline. My first guideline is going to be about the width of a finger, maybe a little bit more than a finger. And I'm going to just try to get all that hair cut down to the half guard closed length. Uh, which is going to leave the hair 1.5 millimeters with the guard and then you got to add in for about 0.5 millimeters for the uh, Blade so together it's it's knocking the hair down to two millimeters Which means that it's going to be super super easy when I come in with my follow-up step to remove that length Now I like to jump all the way around the whole head. I like to work these steps all the way around the head I know some people like to work in panels Personally, I feel like it's easier for me to see my guides if I could just check them both. So I just wanna make sure that my half guard length is the same on both sides uh, before I move into my next step. 
and also around the back. You can drop it a little bit if you choose to. Um, it really doesn't matter. It just depends on the length that you're trying to go for. So once I've done the half guard, I'm actually going to go with my open taper. I'm going to take my open taper in there and I'm just going to come up underneath with it wide open and little by little, I'm going to begin closing it. And every time I close it, I'm going to just take a little bit more. I'm going to, I'm going to come down a little bit more and I'm just going to try to feed that clipper by using that crisscross pattern, trying to pick up any hair that I can into that comb blade so that it get cut to the length that I want. And, and be careful not to rush this step. This is a really important step and you definitely don't wanna find yourself coming back to this. So just be really thorough before you move on. And then that way later, if you do have to do some cleanup, it's gonna be really minimal and you're gonna have it easy. You're gonna have the blend come out easy. So once I've completed this step, it's very possible you might have to return to your trimmer just to match those two lengths between where you went with your electric shaver and your 5.0. Uh, but if you've done it properly, there's a good chance that you might not even have to go back to the step. And that is also why we want to make sure that we have our clippers when we have our trimmer zero gapped. I've done a bunch of videos on this and there is a lot of videos about zero gapping. So if that's something you need help with, but essentially we just want to try to make our clippers cut as close as possible again to minimize those jumps in length as we begin to do the blend as we begin to come up. Now I like to work these steps all the way around the head. So I'm going to just do this on both sides of the head. Now, Something that I could tell you about this particular haircut is this really shouldn't take you more than like 20 minutes just because this is a, this is definitely one of the more basic cuts, but also you can really mess this up too. So don't try to rush it. But once you've gotten enough practice, you should be doing this around 20 minutes. And of course there are clients that come in with situations that are going to take you much more time. Uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday, I've, I found myself feeling like I was on time, but I was just falling in love with this blend I was working on. I thought it was looking so good and I just got obsessed about it and I wanted it to be so perfect. And I looked and I was running 10 minutes behind. So this is real trench work, which means that we got to get this done at a good quality in a good amount of time. Sometimes God, I wish I could spend another hour or two on these blends or spend at least an hour on the blend because I really would like to perfect it. But Trench work can't be like that. We'll never make money. We just got to do a good quality cut and we got to do it in a short amount of time. So um, again, in the back, there's definitely going to be some shapes to the head that might throw your lengths off. So be careful to, to work with them and just see how the light is hitting it. And I can't stress to you the importance of having a good light. It really is everything. And even when I travel, I usually bring my little RGB light and set it up on my station wherever I wind up. So if I wind up at a house or a hotel room or something like that, I do travel with a light because how are you gonna fix what you can't see? And one thing that was pretty cool that S-Craft Blends was talking about was just developing your barber eye. And that is definitely something we've talked about on this channel where your strongest tool you got is your eyes and your eyes are going to have to lead you uh, to your next step. And if you can't see those little errors in the cut, just give it time and you'll train yourself and you will learn. And we're going to jump into our next step. So we did the one and a half on top. I did a half close and then underneath it, we blended out that whole line. So the very next step we're going to do, we're going to grab that number one and we can open it and we can run pretty high up to the part and we'll begin closing it gradually. And you'll begin to see this blend is starting to come together pretty quickly in this step. And of course, We've never done any of the open with the half guard yet, so that's gonna be the last step. Uh, we'll put the finishing touches on it, and then this one's gonna be a pretty much a wrap. It's gonna be a pretty uh, good A to B cut. Uh, definitely something that you need, to, you need to make sure that you have on lock in your repertoire because you really don't need to worry so much about blending into some super long hair. Um, if you learn how to do clipper over comb, you're going to realize that pretty soon you're just going to need to master blending from skin to a number two, and then you can take from two to clipper over comb into any length that you want. So really, those are really the fundamentals here. And as long as you focus on those skills, you're going to be all right. So what I would tell any new beginner, anybody who's watching this channel right now is this type of haircut is definitely the type of haircut that you're going to want to practice. You're going to want to master. And then once you can master the blend, um, we can get into the phase two stuff and we can get into learning how to, how to perfect your clipper over comb. A lot of people really struggle with it. Um, and I have videos on clipper over comb. If that's something that you need to look at, uh, uh, feel free to hop on my channel and, and check out the clipper over comb video. But now that we're pretty much done, as you can see, like I personally don't leave myself a whole lot of cleanup work. Um, one step I do like to use is the shears on the top and I like to just cut them little hairs that might stick out because it drives me nuts when I'm looking at a hard, hard part 
and um, I'm, I'm looking right down the line and I see the little hair sticking out. So just take your extra time, make sure that you're not um, messing anything up. And take that extra time, make sure that you're not leaving those little hairs. The other, the last part of my haircuts, the last part of my haircuts that nobody really talks about is phase six. And in phase six, phase six is when we're gonna step back, we're gonna use our mirror for perspective, we're gonna make sure that we don't see anything that's not right before we hand the mirror to the client. When you hand the mirror to the client, that's you saying that I've already went through my quality control process, I think this is good, here it is. And then the client's like, yo, do you think this could be blended a little bit better? You definitely want to avoid that. And how many times have you handed the client the mirror and then seen something? I do it too, I totally get it. I take the mirror back, I fix the thing I seen, and then I'm, you know, they're out the door. Give them a once over, make sure that everything is perfect and then you can feel free to move on. I wanna thank you guys for stopping to the YouTube Barber Academy. I hope this video helps. If it did, please give me a little thumbs up, drop me a little like, drop me a little comment. Um, anything is appreciative and share this video, of course, if you know anybody who can use this because uh, YouTube really hates me and I don't really understand why, but we're definitely not getting the views that we should. I really feel like I'm hitting the pavement for you guys and trying my best to get you guys to really learn barbering, um, not just the surface knowledge. I'm trying to take you all the way. All right, appreciate you guys once again. This is the YouTube Barber Academy and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Wait a minute, before you guys go, I wanna invite you to hit that bell, hit subscribe and stick around because we're gonna go live all the time. It's far more interactive, it's a lot more intuitive, you'll learn a lot more and uh, we'll go through this video and many others as we continue to grow. We build off each lesson from the last week so don't miss out on that opportunity. It's free, it's fun and we're gonna have a good time and a lot of guests and we do giveaways. So I encourage you guys, hit subscribe. Other than that, man, thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video, peace.